Hey everybody, it's Tom Cherry with Linux MCE. Wanted to give a quick demonstration of a little progress report I'm doing on the Arcos 9 Orbiter. So far I have the Orbiter software running on here as is. I haven't started doing any new Orbiter UI stuff yet, but uh, this is just to show you where I am right now. What I will not be showing you this time, unfortunately, is video playback because I still have to work out some details with Intel on the EMGD drivers, particularly with BA API. Right now those drivers are seg faulting, uh, which is preventing mPlayer or VLC or anything else from working and using the GPU features of the card to accelerate video so that you can watch high definition video on the device. But the device is more than capable of actually doing it. With that said, let's actually go ahead and go through a quick little run through here. We've basically based the, the uh, tablet on Mego as far as using the base distribution and everything, and I've stripped everything away except what is needed to actually boot the device. And as you can see, for those of you who have uh, used Pad Orbiter before, you'll actually see that the boot up time is actually significantly reduced from uh, Pad Orbiter because the operating system is a lot leaner. Most of the time is actually spent. Uh, inside of post so yeah once you get past post it boots up very quickly as you can see here a nice little splash screen for uh, nice little splash screen for boot up it only takes a few seconds and once we get past the initial kernel load here it stops and it loads orbiter now it's loaded and Bing. As you can see, everything loaded, everything ready to go. Go ahead and focus real quick. Okay. Now once we're actually here, of course, we have access to this. And we can, of course, play back and do all of our nifty little things that we know we need to do. Uh, let me go ahead and just kill this real quick. Go back so I can go back to playing back the video. As you can see, we're currently playing Hulu at the moment. And as you can see here, the responsiveness of the orbiter is excellent. We can scroll very quickly, tap through things very efficiently. I'll go ahead and just pick something out of the box here. Please disregard the yellow in here. We still haven't fixed the rendering issues. But as you can see, it plays quite nicely. Stop it, go back to where we were. Audio, much the same way. Go to a playlist real quick. Oh, come on. Are you actually going to take and. Yeah, there we go. Eh, we'll just play some quick. <laughs> Interactive screens also work pretty well. And of course the TV remote. Also nice and responsive as well. Waiting for Myth TV to come up. Give me a second. And as we can see once we're here. The handbag. It's nice and very responsive. Jasmine. Hi, tell us about your collection. Oh, and I really wanted to tie.
tie that in with See? Quite nice, isn't it? Okay. So, there we go. And of course, now that we're done, we can, if we want to turn it off, we just hit the power button. Hold it for a moment. And the system will simply turn itself off. Well, there we go, fellas. Uh, hopefully more to show later. I will try to take and implement uh, video playback. It is worth to note that OpenGL Plus compositing does work here, and Orbiter GL does function on this tablet. It's actually quite nice. The only problem is that uh, any mouse presses, button presses, etc., anything that would, would register as a, as a screen touch, isn't being interpreted by Orbiter's event loop at present, and I would probably, eh, I would spend some time on it if I was actually going to use Orbiter GL for the final bits of it, but it is worth noting that it does work on here, complete with compositing and everything enabled. So, uh, hopefully another status report back in a little bit uh, with more, more stuff, more stuff to show you. Uh, talk to you guys later. Bye.